Welcome back to Eco. If you're following along, you're going to want to head to the desert. Or indeed grasslands, but desert is probably your best bet. Because today, we're going into iron. If we have a look here on our map, into biomes, have a look at the grassland. Well, grassland is everywhere, including all this space in front of me. Near the house and everywhere else, there is grassland, of course. Where I was actually digging over here... Uh, right there, that's into forest, so we weren't seeing any iron. However, if I did get dug anywhere else, it would have been uh, available to get iron. However, that's not the best place. The best place is desert. So if you have desert available, go in and get it. Otherwise, go for grassland, which there should be plenty of. So I've got another stockpile down here, and you can see I've started digging down into this desert area. Uh, it's only a very small area because there is, uh, well, this there's a little section of it. There is a river. I'm going to hit if I hit, get to, too shallow, so I'm going to go down uh, pretty pretty quickly. And down here, you'll see this is all sandstone. Okay, so it's very lightly banded. And if you get further down, uh, I'll just pick this up. Uh, this is all sandstone. You can see that dark banding there? That is iron ore. So if I just get rid of these for a second, there's some more right there. So let's just get rid of this sandstone. And we'll then be able to expo expose the iron ore. Now, uh, it's relatively shallow underneath the ground. You, What happens with ore in uh, Eco is there is a certain band. It's not like um, veins like in Minecraft or something. Uh, you tend to get just a frequency of it appearing at a certain depth. And you'll get um, you know that happening and then there's a certain percentage chance. So in the desert, I think it's something like... 45% chance at a certain depth and we're already down to I don't know maybe 10 below surface or something like that so uh, we can immediately just well we can just pick up some more of this sandstone you can see it's starting to appear more and more of the um can I get rid of this yeah more and more of the iron ore so if I take that take this uh we'll just basically destroy all of this and you can, this is a stone uh tool by the way so it is the, you know, the most basic thing that you've got and a whole bunch of stuff now remember we need a fair amount of this to actually get the smeltery skill if I remember rightly so we, we've got 20 there there'll be another 20 easily uh, available and then I've got it in a cart I can drag the cart over there a little bit uh, I'm not sure if I can drag it up the hill because we don't have ramps yet but um, at least it can be quite close to where we need it so yeah I'm just going to keep collecting and then let's just go and uh, start the research for um, for the smeltery for the smeltery skill I should say and maybe I need to dig some more of this out. And that's all in place with the skill book now. It does just need 40 iron ore. However, the other requirement is basically mortared stone. You need 20 of I've got about six. Uh, the easiest way to get the mortar to make the mortared stone is this stuff. So you've probably not chopped down all of your, your basically the tree surroundings, all the, the broken limbs, everything else that gets destroyed when trees go down and uh, you get wood pulp for this and basically there's only a few ways to actually get mortar uh, one way is to grind uh, granite or sandstone into mortar but that takes quite a while with each um with each stone working table basically or you can collect wood fibers like this that's, uh, that's the second way it does take quite a lot of this stuff though to actually make it so do be aware you're going to need food yeah, you can see already I'm down from full down to something less than that. Um, uh, probably about, uh, yeah, for a quarter or a fifth off full. And, uh, yep, so I'm going to keep collecting that anyway because it's nice to clean up and then we get a chance of trees regrowing uh, if we actually do that. As long as you don't deforest the area completely, remember. So um, you do want to not chop down every tree you see in a, like a expanding line away from your, your home base just leave various trees around so that they get chance to regrow and there is a third way i believe that may well be from plant fibers let me just check that one yep yeah, there you go fiber mortar from 20 plant fibers if you want to head around with a scythe instead of course there'll be a lot more of this stuff once you've cleared all of the the wood uh, out of your area so you can see i'm sort of down to about half now so yeah a lot of this actually needed so if i just go in here let's see how much we've got and how much mortar that actually gives us so here we are masonry mortar that's the one from sand which takes quite a while with one of these masonry tables uh, instead i want the pulp mortar and yes unfortunately these do take 30 uh to to do for each pulp mortar now so that's quite expensive so there's five 
And unfortunately, one mortar stone needs uh, five. So yes, it is going to be really expensive to get all the mortar stone. Later on, I think it's going to be quite intentional that uh, you'll be gr grinding a whole bunch of mortary, uh, mortary? masonry tables, uh, grinding granite into sand uh, or sandstone down into sand, and then you can just build it back up into masonry mortar because four sand will then make three mortar. Much better exchange rate. So what I'm probably going to do for the others on this side is just actually process some uh, some granite while that's going. And we have sandstone that's coming up from the mine down uh, down there because it is the, the kind of stone that's underneath the sand of the desert. So there's plenty of stuff to actually get there. And uh, what I'm probably going to do, add a suggestion uh, from a commenter who was talking, who was, who's really talking about more that mine, is that we can put the stockpiles down there and have, instead of bringing up the stone back to the stockpile up here, instead build what is essentially a room down there. Because you can have room in rocks, just like you can have room, like a cave, basically, in it, just like you can have a room like this. It won't be terribly good quality, so you may have to haul some wood down there or something else to make it good quality, but you can still make a room out of rock and uh, then you can have masonry tables down there processing it that compacts it all down into sand uh, which of course is if you have a look here it's uh, how much is it for one sand one sand is 12 granite or six sandstone so you can get six to one or a 12 to one reduction in uh, size at which point you can just pick up a stack of sand wherever it is and bring that up instead something entirely i'm off to go do a bit more mining of course, sand is just sand, so if you find it in the world, you're more than welcome to actually put it in there. However, it's not in that desert area. Uh, the desert area, or at least around where I am, um, it's not really sand. It, it looks sandy, but it's really just biomed dirt, essentially. So it's a desert dirt. Uh, whereas sand, uh, you probably want to go out to the coastline kind of areas. Depends on how much coastline you have, but that should actually be true sand. So if you want to go for a trip, instead of grinding stuff up that's right next to your house, Feel free, take a cart with you, not because you can use the cart at all uh, in terms of hauling it, but because it easily allows you to, uh, instead of you know doing this, we can't really carry more than one with a shovel, so we need somewhere to actually group things up. You can use a, a stockpile you take with you, or a cart, anything really that lets you put stuff into groups, and that will then let us turn this into, well, a uh, sand stack of... Well, is it going to be 20? Can we get 11 in one? Uh, 11? Uh, no, it's in stacks of 10. So stacks of 10, that will work. So, and you want to hold those back, you can absolutely do so at your own pleasure. Uh, or indeed put more stockpiles down here and stuff like that. Um, hmm, I, I'm stuck now. <laughs> I want my, I, uh, I want my, um, my cart back, but I, I can't. I can't because I've got basically 10 shovels full of sand on my uh, in front of my character. Regardless, I can bring that back and that is certainly a lot faster than grinding um, uh, granite down. And after a few trips, here's our last mortared stone coming off production. And it's 10 seconds left. And then we have everything else. We have the hewn logs we have the mortar stone of course obviously and we have 40 iron ore in here so that should be everything the research table needs uh however it may need to be put in range uh so let me just grab that i don't think it's actually in range at the moment so let's move out of this room for a minute and we'll swap that over that and let's pop it there okay and now in here we should have smelting and we need to give it access to the um Stockpile. Smelting. 15 minutes. And we get the ability to use our bloomery uh, to produce iron ore. Okay, so one thing I want to actually research at this point is uh, you're going to start generating tailings as soon as you start triggering this thing up. So I am going to need to make a few more mods, so maybe just to try and seal uh, things in down there. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to keep on digging, of course, and keep on using up calories. Uh, I definitely don't want to use the star because that's going to be dedicated for uh, whatever comes out of this. Can I actually see that right now? I don't think I can. Um, it's going to be in Smith. Yeah, it's going to be in here smelting. Skill is currently being researched. 
Um, fine. Anvil recipes. Anvil will take 30 iron ingots. And uh, tw oh, just to give you an idea, 20 iron ore, at least at the start of the game, when you first start using it, converts into one iron ingot. So a full stack is a single iron ingot. And an anvil is 30 iron ingots. That's 600 iron ore. Um, yeah, so divide that by four. Um, so whatever that is. Um... 150 blocks or so yeah yeah it's 150 blocks of iron ore that you have to actually hit with a hammer or uh, with a, a pickaxe so yeah, yeah that's going to be expensive ah we can see in here though once we spend on this um let's just see there's our all of our recipes and we can see we can craft all the iron tools which is going to be great and the one we really want is that blast furnace right in the middle of the screen. That gets rid of the, the, the tailings, of course. So I'll need to work out how much iron we need to get to the blast furnace. And this is where it's handy to have lots of people in multiplayer on this game. So if you have them yourself, feel free to invite some friends along. I checked and there's no chance of us getting that blast furnace anytime soon. <laughs> we need a sawmill. We need all kinds of other things like an assembly line. Uh, yes, this game has a lot more stuff to it than, than you might think by looking at it at the start. So, yeah, let's think about other things. Uh, one thing we're also going to need at some point as well is bricklaying, and that will get us... Uh, we'll need to get cloth for that. We'll need to get 50 mortar, which is quite a lot, and then 50 mortared stone. And obviously, we've made only 20 so far. So, yes, we do actually need more stuff, and this will be made, of course, in our kiln. Uh, so we have bricks requiring bricklaying, etc., and um, that again is going to need clay and mortar. So yeah, we'll need to get that as well. Anyway, uh, I don't think I've got some fish cooking. I've got like uh, 20 odd fish. Yeah, charred fish. So good. I should have a little bit of food. There we go. And uh, we should be good to go. So I think my uh, I think my skill book's actually ready. Let's take a look. Should be dumped somewhere. Yeah, smelting. Uh, smelting skill scroll created. Is that my backpack? It is. Right click and we've got smelting. Good. And we've got some extra land claim papers as well, which will be useful for, you know, just attaching more house room or so, you know, another building that we'll probably need to actually put up fairly soon. So from that, we're then going to need to basically go and, oh, my stomach's full, uh, basically go and uh, trigger our first iron ingot. So we need to go down there with uh, some wood and some um uh 20 iron ore i think it is yeah it is 20 iron ore. i did, did just mention that so i just need some wood now uh let's borrow some maybe from the kiln yeah and let's go and uh, dump this in the bloomery and get our first piece of iron and the iron of course you can use for all kinds of things we we have recipes for the various tools I also was given uh, things like a pickaxe when I first picked up the uh, the mining skill, so I can now repair that pickaxe. Uh, let's just put that logs in there. There we go. And iron ingot. So let's get one. It takes four minutes, at least it does, until we get a lot more skill points than this. Uh, is that my... That's my basic engineering. I should, if I go into Z, hopefully now be able to see Smith. Yes, good. Smelting, and I can then choose this as a specialization. Yep. Because that will cut down, well, decreases the craft time. In fact, can we actually do that? Can I just cancel the project and restart it? Yeah, and hang on, it, t it takes less. I'm happy for it to take less. Where did the rest of it go? Uh, 10 of it went into the stockpile. Fine. So I should be able to trigger another one. Yep. And now, because I took smeltery, I can trigger two instead of having just one. And that is a really, really big saving at this point in the actual game. So I'm happy to do that. Anyway, uh, where were we from here? Oh, yes. Back in Z again. Back into Smith. Into smelting. And that's going to increase, obviously, as we go through here, faster crafting time and um, better efficiency. So cost, basically. And uh, we'll get, we should be getting some experience as we actually go through. Uh, is it on this list now? Is that smelting? Yes, it is. So as that completes, we should start seeing this jump up. 
Uh, can I actually hide these from here, you know? Because this is now maxed. Uh, did that hide it? Well, I just shifted it to show it. I don't, know, I don't really need to see this anymore. It's quite weird. Is this going to continue to become this tall? Hmm, yeah, so I'm not quite sure about that one. But uh, in any case, we want to get to these talents. I want to get to level three, and then we'll see what talent choice we get. Anything to make it even more efficient. I don't necessarily need speed, because we can all sleep using the bed that we have um, upstairs. And uh, that's going to be straightforward. It's just that um, efficiency is the main thing. So, yeah, let's get our first couple of iron ore, and obviously our first set of tailings. We do have a small stockpile down there to store some ta ta tailings, I should say and i'll need to excavate out the rest to place a large stockpile and start making sure that's sealed in i.e there's, no, there's no soil on any side and it's at least 15 below the surface and hopefully that shouldn't cause pollution now if you do get to blast furnaces it's not going to be yet for any of you unless you've got a huge amount of people playing with you um do be aware that that produces two other types of pollution it produces groundwater pollution and air pollution air pollution dissipates over time Groundwater pollution is basically sewage, or the equivalent of sewage, and you need to get rid of that by filtering, uh, or indeed dumping it somewhere where it will not leach into the environment. So yeah. And also you may have, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I did build a ramp down there if I haven't already mentioned it, which means I can go and build myself more carts and now haul stuff from the other mine. Uh, however, I don't have that going down all the way into the ground yet, which is what you probably will want to do because uh, it's not just these small hand carts we're going to get. We're going to motorize carts soon enough. Uh, but because the river is a little bit close over there, we'll probably have to start ramping down from back here at some point. But for now, it's fine to go down there by hand. And of course, I've got a stockpile right here. I can go and grab some more iron ore easily enough until I uh, have another cart. So this will get me four iron ore total. Sorry, four iron ingots total. And um, probably four tailings as well to get rid of. So I need to clearly excavate out the rest of that uh, other mine. And I would like a cart with a larger capacity, so we're going to go for this from the Wainwright table, which is the regular wood cart rather than the smaller one. It does need two wooden wheels, but no iron to actually make. The iron, we can only really make six iron ingots at the moment because I only have one small stockpile. So one small stockpile equals six iron ingots, as far as the tailings you can store afterwards anyway. So we clearly need the large stockpile downstairs. And of course, to help that, I'm just going to see how large this regular wood cart is. And there it is. It's still a small cart for handling or for hauling um, small loads or something, but it is significantly bigger if I just place this down than the other one. If we have a look inside here, uh, I'm not sure it's going to show, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's take it downstairs and let's just compare it because I'm going to have a couple of more iron ingots. That takes me up to about six total. So I'm not doing too badly in that, uh, you know, now 30 iron ingots doesn't look insurmountable because we are getting skills or skill points from actually the smeltery skill. I apologize, it's a little bit dark in here, but you can see right there. Uh, so we have one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's fifty percent larger than this small wood cart, and will certainly help if I can carve, up, carve out some room to actually uh, store stuff down here. Then, uh, then yes, we'll be able to use this small wood cart for the time being. I guess we could. Could I just put a a large wood cart inside a small wood cart? Yes, I can. Okay. I clearly am not going to be able to do that when. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm heading back out now. If you can't see. Um, <laughs> I clearly won't be able to do that once the carts are full, otherwise we end up with infinite carts, um, but yeah, uh, that'll do fine. And now filling in the roof upstairs when we're doing these rooms, instead of going for the flat roof again, I'm going to go for the actual roof blocks. I obviously didn't want to use those downstairs, so I'm just going to replace these flat ones, and we're just going to drop them into roof blocks. And they should form themselves automatically, if I remember rightly. It might need a bit of coaxing, but uh, otherwise should look pretty good so let's just bring those out and a look at that let's take a look and if i just uh, go up here for a second i should be able to form a ladder block so we'll do that down there and uh, so i'll pick up drop there we go and i can climb and we can do you can do that into a mine by the way you don't have to just do it out here 
Yep, there we go. We can climb. And <laughs> it might be nice if I can actually get off that without uh, problems. Uh, what about putting something there like that? If I just put down a floor block up there. How about that? Well, can I just get off sideways? Can you let me get off sideways? Oh, well, at least you can see the actual roof. Oh, no, I can. I just need to jump. That's fine. So you can see the roof blocks right there, and uh, they do have a flat roof on them. You can put more roof blocks on top to make it form into a fully peaked roof, uh, I believe. So let's just try that one. Uh, we just need the roof blocks again, and you can put it right here. Uh, let's grab a couple more of these. And yeah, you get the idea. That will actually work just fine. However, in the meantime, we can pick that back up and then we can form basically what is what turns out to be pretty much the ceiling for this room. And up here. So it does look quite nice by comparison to the flat roof and uh, should be quite nice for your huts. And with that complete, our bedroom can be moved upstairs and everything else downstairs then becomes free for it to be a, basically another general room. So if we have a look in here, we still got the same same quadrant, same um, sort of uh, bonus points down here, but we no longer need the bed. We can use this room for whatever we like. Uh, how much uh, storage does this actually use? It uses, uh, so status, uh, 25 meter or cubic meters. So let's just grab the tailoring table. Yeah, um, can we just put this down here? Will this actually count? You may want a, a high quality room. Yeah, yeah. So all we need to do is dig out the floor and uh, basically put that. Oh no, wait. I think we can just put this in the bedroom. Because um, we don't all need all the stations all the time. And this one is high quality. So let's just see if this actually counts. Yeah, it looks like it does. Yeah, there it is. So uh, yeah, your objects in the room use 45 cubic meters of 75. Tailored table uses the 45, basically. So uh, you have uh, this, this room tier is one out of a needed 0.8. So clearly having these roof blocks in place, uh, along with a small chair in a room like this is perfectly fine. So there we go, crafting. So we are going to need more skill points for this. So we, we are going to want to probably sleep a little bit to gain more skill points, um, depending on how long it takes. Uh, five or 25 minutes, we're definitely going to want to sleep uh, after we get everything just stocked up and everything else like that. Um, yeah, um, or at least I want the tailoring skill points. I want the, the sort of improvements to make it better later uh, because we're going to be using cloth. Basically, I want the experience from cloth and you're going to make that from plant fiber, just like we could make the mortar from quite, quite versatile plant fiber. You make cloth or mortar to bind your house together with. Feels like primitive technology channel on YouTube. Oh, that guy's amazing. Uh, anyway, so uh, we were able to then get into crafting uh, a backpack. So we'll need to have some other things like leather hide, which will need the butchery skill. And yeah, so we are going to need just more skill points. Now, at this point, you don't absolutely have to sleep through. You could change your local server to be granting much more skill points than normal, you know, quadruple it or something like that. Uh, entirely up to you how you actually structure that. It's um, it's the same thing either way, effectively. Uh, why isn't that? Let me pick it up. Oh, is it just stacked? It's just stacked on the floor. Fine. There we go. So, yep, there's more rooms to go in up here, and then we can move the uh, low quality room ingredients down here, up there, and, uh, you know, we, we can keep this down here for work rooms uh, over time as I actually replace the floor with uh, more expensive stuff. Eventually, we'll get to sort of like a flagged, flagged floor and then, uh, you know, brick walls and stuff like that. But uh, that's not there yet. Bricks take uh, a fair amount of time to get through. Okay, so I think I'll leave it here for today's episode. You tend to be quite short in eco episodes uh, in terms of time because it takes so much time to get stuff done at the start of the game. Um, I need to get a lot of the, the experience running. You can see quite a few of these are now up to level well, 7. Um, the smeltery is up to level 2, so it now costs 9 iron ore instead of 20 as we had before we even got the skill book to make one iron ingot. So the more that goes up, the better. And you can have a look in here. Uh, I have got a uh, thousand experience. Uh, that, that thousand experience was from two ingots. Okay, so I'm going to need to clearly get, um, what is that, 12 ingots 
more to get leveled up to level three that will then unlock the talent but to do that i've got to do a lot of digging which of course means makes me run out of time to talk to you in the actual episode uh so yeah why does my shadow um i have no shadow i am a vampire and i can just hold up an axe never mind <laughs> I won't condemn things too much. Everything's fine otherwise. Uh, the beets that we planted down over there are actually going fairly well. Uh, again, when you start sleeping through, plants will grow because obviously that's what's happening. You're fast forwarding time. So down here, uh, we will need to get to farming fairly soon. Oh, there they are. Uh, farming fairly soon, figuring out what the soil composition is and how much moisture there is, picking spots, and then we can put use the road tool around them just to make sure that we're not... Um, we're not basically uh, trampling them. That is another point I shouldn't say, actually, if you go into your map tool. Haven't really shown you this so far, but if you look in the pollution section, there's air pollution, which there's none of right now. Okay, there's debris, which this is the stuff when you start cutting down trees. I just cut that one down there. So you can see the areas I need to clean up a little bit more. And then you go to ground pollution, which thankfully there are none yet. Okay, uh, what does that... Is that the... Uh, is that our bloomery? Yeah, there's the little icon for the bloomery. You'll see there's no ground pollution around it right now. Do keep an eye on that, depending on where you put your tailings. Uh, player activity. Obviously, you can see exactly where, where I am um, actually around all the time. Player trampled. So as you're actually running over stuff, it will kill plants, basically. You'll see plants start to die off. And this is the effect overall in game with all kinds of different things. If you don't watch what you're doing, you will start killing off plants. So uh, whenever I keep running and jumping over these plants, it does have an effect over time. So yeah, do keep an eye on your map for the various types of pollution. Otherwise, we'll see you next episode. I have seen enough iron ingots now to repair my iron pickaxe and maybe to think about uh, looking in for the crafting recipes for the others. But uh, we'll come on to that next episode anyway. This episode, first iron ingots and uh, more mining. As always, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more Eco.